All right, continuing the CHT topic, we have uh, Lisa to talk about multi-objective shape optimization of a Venturi mixer for residential heating. Or okay, there? thank you for the introduction. Um, so this is um, a talk about a joint uh, project with NISO about um, the optimization of Venturi mixers. And last year I was already talking about this topic, but I was focusing on the multipoint aspect and this year we extended it to multi-objective optimization. So the title is very similar, but we are considering multi-objective optimization. Um, you can see the system that we are looking at uh, on the right-hand side, and we are specifically interested in this particular part, which is the Venturi mixer, where the methane and air are mixed before they enter the burner region. And we want to um, optimize the performance of this mixer, mixture uh, of, the, of this mixer by optimizing the shape of it. And we are interested in different performance measures. First of all, to meet a target fuel to air ratio before entering the burner region. Um, that's the, the first one here. And then also we are interested in um, improving the mixing quality in terms of homogeneity. And at the same time, we want to constrain the pressure drop in the system. So, um, since we want to do this over different levels of powers, of operating powers, this is a multi-point optimization. And since we have different objective functions, we have a multi-objective optimization. So to give you a short of an outline, I will first talk a bit about the simulation aspect because we change a bit. Um, and then concentrate on multi-objective optimization, how we set it up um, in the framework, and then show some optimization results. So here's the geometry of the Venturi mixer. Um, you see here the air in that and the gas in that and the outlet. And the gas in that is further controlled by some needle, but for our simulations, we uh, keep the needle position fixed. And also we perform a simulation on a 2D axisymmetric slice. So this will be the geometry down there that we uh, yeah, consider. So to go a bit more into detail about the multi-point aspect. So on the right hand side, you can see this graph showing the CO2 percentage over the power levels. And we see this in various, um, on various slides uh, in the talk. And we are specifically interested in reaching a certain target, which is the, the, the purple one here, targets um, percentage of CO2 over the range of powers, which makes it multi-point. And also, we want to have a good mixing quality over this range. Um, so these are the two objectives, and then again, the constraint. Um, to give you some uh, yeah, functions for that, so we denote the first objective function F1, and this is summing over the operating conditions, the square distance from the mean mass fraction at the outlet for the specific operating point. Here, we choose this target value. And then F2, we denote the, for the mixing quality, uh, we denote it as the coefficient of variation, which is summing over the standard deviation of the methane mass fraction at the outlet divided by the mean methane mass fraction at the outlet. And for both objective function, we can use the custom objective function in SU3. So last uh, year, I showed some results on the multipoint, just focusing on meeting the target values. And we got some nice results. So in blue are, is the original design, the curve of the CO2 percentage over the power levels, and the black one is the optimized. But what we saw is that we were still, um, although the design was better in the experiment, um, not agreeing completely with our simulations. So that's why we revisit our simulations and we did a lot of changes indicated here in blue. I don't want to go too much into detail, but was, was especially important where some new functionality is introduced by Christopher and Eva, um, which is the composition dependent model and the bonus scalar model. And with that, we could get a much better agreement um, with our measurements. So the dot, dots are here the measurements and the uh, bold curve is the simulations. So 
how does the multi-objective optimization then look like? First of all, we want to um, parameterize the shape of the mixer, and we want to parameterize it in the inlet area, but also a bit in the mixing area. And this is the corresponding FFD box that we choose. We can vary the control points of the FFD box in both directions, leading us to 288 design variables. Design space is then composed of the constraining this, this, uh, this um, design variables and also constraining with respect to the total pressure. And then we have the multi objective optimization problem, minimize over this design space. The function f1 and f2, f1 being the distance to a target with frame mass fraction, f2 being the coefficient of variation. And um, you will see that these are conflicting objectives, which means that we don't have a single optimal solution, but instead we want to find some trade-off solutions that can then be proposed to a design engineer. And therefore we use the notion of Pareto optimality to search for Pareto optimal solutions. So the task would be to find several solutions and um, we make use of scalarization approaches that means the multi-objective optimization problem is transformed into several single objective optimization problems. And there are different methodologies how to transform this. Um, the most prominent one being the weight of thumb method um, right here, where we can easily do this in SU2. We just have all the functionalities there to add the function with the corresponding weights. And the only thing that we have to do to find different points is to alter these weights. Problem is, if we alter the weights and we see this later um, in an equidistant fashion, we will not have equidistant outcomes in, uh, as solutions. So the solutions are not very representative. Um, another problem is depending on how your problem looks like. So this is an example of objective space to objective functions. Um, the curve here is where the Pareto optimal solutions lie. And um, if we have non-convex part, we cannot cover them with the weighted sum method. That's not possible. And that's why we um, focused also on constraint methods. Um, the epsilon constraint method being one of them, where we minimize one objective function by setting constraint on the other objective function. And the task is then to first find these individual minima, so the minimum of F1, minimum of F2, and then scan in between by setting constraints for the individual object in front. We can all also do this if we have the problem that some of these constraints are um, overlapping and we have very close solutions and we don't want to have that. We can also use the normal constraint method where we connect these two points here by a line, which is called the utopian line, and then scan orthogonal to this line. So that's just another constraint method within this um, framework. Um, so how do we set this up? So um, we want to have everything configured in a JSON file where we have the settings for the multi-objective optimization, the single objective optimization, and the multi-point settings. And then we have a list of objectives and the corresponding configuration options and the constraints. And we also have a file with all the other, uh, a folder with all the other files that we need. And then there are two steps. Uh, first of all, we want to um, generate all the folders that give us the individual single objective optimization problems to run, to find for each in each folder a Pareto optimal solution. And that is done by this uh, script that just reads the multi-objective problem file, transforms it to several single objective problems files, by assigning weights or constraints, depending on the method we use. And then in the second step, you can in each file uh, folder run a file that uses these um, JSON files to run the individual multi-point optimizations um, using then the FADO framework. Okay, so here are the results. Um, if we first of all minimize the um, Distance, uh, so we look, first of all, look at the individual minima. Um, and if we want to minimize the distance to a target value, we get some nice results. Um, the value can be seen here. And you see the CO2 percentage over the power levels and the nice agreement with the target value. Um, on the right hand side, you can see the corresponding design. 
The bluish one, uh, the surface is the original design. The black line is the new design you see that is especially um, different shaped in the gas inlet right here and also a bit in the air inlet part. Um, the red one that you see is the design optimized for mixing quality. And you see that this is completely different, um, especially also in the shape of the gas inlet. And um, you will we'll see in the next slide um, a bit better why this is the case. And um, if we then measure the distance to the target value, it's far off. So in this plot, it wouldn't even appear. So you see here in more detail um, the yeah, methane mass fraction in the simulation uh, for this. This is for the high power case, so just one of the operating cases um, where we can see the different shapes. So this upper one is the design optimized for the target, meeting the target value. And this is one optimized for mixing quality. Um, we see that for mixing quality, we don't have this, uh, like this separation between the, the, the um, air and the methane um, fraction is not so, so much, but we don't achieve um, the respective mass fraction at the end of methane that we want to achieve. And here you see the corresponding values of the objective function. So quite high for when optimizing for target value, and then we can achieve like 0 0.3 for the mixing point. So now the idea is that we um, want to find some solutions in between these points. So these points are now in the objective function plot, this one optimized for the distance to target, and this one optimized for the coefficient of variation. And then with weight scanning, we find some point in between with the workflow that I just presented. Um, and as you see, they sort of cluster. So all, although we choose um, equidistant weights, um, we see a clustering in objective space. Um, and we can prevent this by using the epsilon constraint method. Um, and really get some nice representative solutions that have different um, values of the distance to the target and the coefficient of variation to choose from uh, for a design engineer and say, this is what, what, we, what we are interested in. So on the right hand side, you just see the corresponding designs, how they vary. Uh, the more bluish ones are the ones corresponding to minimizing the target distance, having a constraint on the coefficient of variation, and the more reddish ones are the ones minimizing coefficient of variation, having a constraint on the target, the distance to target. So we can now have a further look at it. So this is the log plot so that you can better see how this is distributed. Um, maybe if we would be interested in looking at this more, we would say we have like, uh, we are more confident with the ones that are have a nice distance to the target that are also plotted here on the right hand side for the different co2 percentages and then have to think about what to choose from or with the constraint method that we are using we can also easily uh, just say we now want to refine say um, in this region find more solutions get a better understanding of the problem um, what we want to achieve in the end so that's the nice aspect of it Okay, that's what I wanted to present. Uh, to summarize, um, I was showing you some results on multi-objective shape optimization of a Venturi mixer um, over different operating uh, powers, um, showing you the workflow for multi-objective optimization where you can use the, the weighted sum method, epsilon constraint method, and normal constraint method. Um, what we are interested in this test case um, is also to look, look at robust design. We have already, we already did some studies on geometrical uncertainties and also on um, interpreting the multi-point uh, multi optimization as a robust design optimization with a uniform distribution. Um, but what we also are interested in is um, saying that the um, gas is not only composed of methane, but of uh, unknown mixture of um, methane and hydrogen, and then um, optimized for robust design with, risk, with respect to this. And um, you will also later see this uh, in a talk. We are also interested in uh, distributional robustness. And then as a last step, also 
robust multi-objective design. So connecting both robust design and multi-objective optimization. Thank you for your attention. Plenty of time for questions. Yeah, uh, thank you for your question. Um, so I repeat it. Um, so the question was how I ensure the mesh quality when I do the shape optimization. Um, and what I observe is um, that, so we haven't done any mesh studies for some optimized designs. So we are only doing it for the initial configuration yet. Um, the mesh is quite refined in the mixing region. Um, I don't observe any um, convergence issues with my flow. Um, it converges nicely. I mean, I have to converge it because I'm using the edge joints. So um, it's usually um, yeah, not stalling or something like that. So I expect it to be um, okay. Uh, but what we have not done yet is now compare this new design with experiments. So that would be an interesting um, topic as well. Yeah. Sorry, what? So just a SU2 DAF standard settings. Ah, okay. Uh, I got the mesh one now, so maybe you can comment on that. <laughs> so just for the audience, so the Ansys mesh tool was used. Sorry. Other questions? Ah, oh, yeah, thank you. So the question was uh, how the epsilon constraint helps to avoid avoid the clustering and give a nice Pareto front. Um, so maybe I go back to the, the one here. So um, by setting the constraints, you scan more or less uh, in the regions that are constrained by these um, dash lines. So if I, for example, say I want to minimize um, F2, but um, F1 has to be uh, in a certain region, then um, I would find the solution that is right on this line, along this line. And that's how we can ensure if we then have equidistant distribution here to also get more uh, nicer distribution in objective space. Um, with this normal constraint method, this can be even better because for example, you could, could have, this is maybe one example where points are quite close to each other just by setting the, the corresponding constraints. And then with the, weight, uh, with the normal constraint method, what we do is we have a line here and the like the dash lines would be orthogonal to that, so we wouldn't appear close to each, to, yeah, to here. And then for the example, it's nice because we are always close to this, so it's, um, it has a very strong knee here. So by setting the constraints here, we always get nicely mm -hmm. distributed points here. And by setting them here, we get nicely distributed points here. Is the, is the issue with the weights also the, the scaling possible the, of the different objectives? You mean the issue with the weights of the weighted sum? Yeah. Um, I scaled it, um, I scaled all, everything um, by setting, uh, determining these two points mm -hmm. and then set uh, dividing by like the difference in the okay. coefficient of variation or in the distance to target. So they are appropriately scaled. Actually, I didn't do that at the beginning. Um, just as a takeaway, I, I was always landing here because, yeah, I mean, just uh, uh, the coefficient, uh, sorry, 
yeah right here because the coefficient of variation is like has a much higher distribution than uh, contribution and so i'm always minimizing more or less the coefficient of variation so you have to really care, care about the scaling but it works if you just um, use this yeah difference any more questions Let's thank the speaker once again.